Hey guys, welcome back to Recordology. Today I'm going to be showing you how to restore your record. So if you take an old record of any type, it can be a 78 like this, it can be a 45, it can be a 33, um, you can, with very little investment, uh, actually restore a record and convert it to an MP3 file uh, as a restored MP3 file. So the very first thing you need to do is take your record, don't hold it like that, that's bad, but take your record and wash it. So just some cool water in the sink is fine, never using any soap, but just spray it down, try and keep your fingers off the playing surface. You can use a sprayer or you can just put it in the water stream like that. And get all the dust out of the grooves. This removes all of the debris and everything. The paper label won't come off because it's actually stamped into there. It's not um, glued on there. So start with that. Wash the disc and let it dry completely. The next thing you're going to want to do in this process is you're going to want to get yourself a USB archiver. It's a turntable that is powered off of USB instead of a regular mains power supply. The idea is it allows you to plug the USB into your laptop, not only for power, but also to get the signal from the record into the computer where the majority of the restoration is going to occur. This is a Vibe player. This is about, eh, about a $35 player you can get. They're, they're typically inexpensive. So go ahead and open up the record player lid, uh, the archiver lid, place the record that's now dry on uh, the turntable there. In this case, we're going to be doing an RCA Victor reissue of Glenn Miller's Serenade in Blue. Something to note about um, USB archiver turntables is they typically, um, in fact, in every instance that I've seen, only uh, play at 45 RPM and 33 and a third RPM. It's not actually going to be a problem. Even though we're restoring a 78 RPM record here, I'm going to show you how we get around that, but just know that you're not going to find an archiver USB turntable that is, um, that'll play 78s, but that's okay. So I recommend setting it to the faster speed 45 just for time's sake. And uh, once you've got your record loaded into the archiver there, um, we're ready to go on to the next step, uh, which is on the computer side. So let's look at that next. Hey guys, so for this step, you're going to need a program called Audacity. This is a free software that you can get from various places online. Um, it actually sometimes comes on a CD-ROM if you get a USB turntable. Um, you can get it at CNET, I believe, .com and other places. Anyway, go ahead and install that. There'll be instructions. Um, if not, you can look online for how to connect uh, the audio driver to the USB input. Um, it'll default to the microphone array, meaning it'll use the microphone on your laptop, which you don't want but instead you want the primary sound driver, which is basically the sound card on your computer. So you should be able to select that. Once you do that, uh, this thing is now connected to the turntable via the USB. Um, so what you can do is uh, go ahead and hit, and there's a lot of controls here, don't freak out, you don't need most of it. Um, it's actually one of those tools that you, you, know, you don't need as much of it as there is available to you. But start by hitting the record button, that's easy enough. That's going to go ahead and start a timeline, and then go over to the turntable and drop the needle on the record, gently. And it's going to start a waveform right off the bat. You're going to start by setting your volume level up here. Using this uh, slider right here, you'll notice that the VU meter, even just the sound on the disc, is peaking. Um, in this case, at negative 3 primarily, and then peaking at 0 dB. When it hits 0 dB, because it's a digital... Um, representation here it's going to show that it's peaking so you want to set that so it's peaking just below zero Th negative three decibels is just perfect so uh, that way it won't distort so go ahead and slide that down until you get that peaking at just the right level there as you can see we're still too loud there so go ahead and set that there you'll notice that this particular turntable is uh, more prominent on the left channel slightly than the right channel um, we can down mix this to mono, so it's not an issue, uh, but that's pretty common because uh, the left side of the, uh, the needle, you know, is riding the left side of the groove um, a little bit more pressure. So sometimes that represents itself as the left channel being uh, a bit more high volume. So once you get that set um, to your liking, um, and in this case we're still a bit hot here. Oh. I was showing you the wrong slider. So it's instead of this one right here, that's the playback. The microphone is the record volume. 
So go ahead and set that to about negative three dB so you're not peaking too high there. And then you can hit stop here. And then over here on the left, you can hit the X to cancel out that test recording. Then to go ahead and take the needle back off of the uh, record, put it in the rest there. So now we're ready to record. So that's all the setup you need to do is really setting that volume. When you're finding that peak volume, make sure that you uh, play the record at the most loud piece of, uh, loudest place on the record so you can make sure that it's not gonna peak out on you. So to record, just do what we did before. Go ahead and hit the record button and gently place the stylus onto the record. And we're going to go ahead and let it record that. Now, as we talked about before, um, the USB turntable is only recording at 45 RPM. I was only playing back at 45 RPM. So the audio that you hear when you're recording it in is going to be not what we're going to hear at the end. It is slower than the final product. But we'll be able to fix that with this software. That's one of the things we do. So if you're playing a 45 back, it'll play back in real time. If you're playing a 33, set the record player to 33, it'll play that back real time. But if you're doing a 78 like we are now, it's gonna play that back slower. So go ahead and let this uh, record the entire thing and uh, I won't make you sit through that whole thing. We'll be right back. Okay, so we've finished our recording. Go ahead and hit stop up here. And this particular recording is now has its own controls. It's got an X, you can delete it. Uh, you can also pan the audio left and right. We'll show you how to do that. Um, as well as muting it, soloing the track if you have multiple ones, yada, yada, yada. So go ahead and roll this back to the beginning with the slide bar. And you're going to see the point when the uh, recording stopped. You're going to see this bit is when we dropped the stylus and then when the actual recording started. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the stylus by clicking here and just hitting play. It's going to play that back at that same slow volume or speed for right now. But I want to normalize this. Up here, as you can see, the left channel is still prevalent. So down here, I'm going to move this to the right. This will change the prevalence of that playback so that it's even. And as you can see in the top right there, it's peaking in a more even uh, way now that we've uh, put the slider a little bit to the right so that the left channel isn't so prevalent. Okay? Okay. So once you've got that uh, left and right balanced the way you want it so that um, when you hit play up there, it's really uh, peaking fairly evenly, go ahead and hit stop. And what we're going to do now is we're going to change the overall uh, speed now. So since we recorded it at 45 RPM, we're going to do control A, select the track, go up here to effect and go down here to change speed. Um, instead of doing the multiplier, which you can do that if you want, we're simply going to say we recorded from 45 and we want it to go to 78. So you can change these values depending on what speed you recorded and what you want the final output to be. So this is going to change our 45 RPM recording to the proper 78 RPM and all of a sudden uh, it's going to sound a whole lot more normal now. So that's going to apply the change to the overall uh, recording there. And so if we play it back, you'll hear the difference. It'll sound normal. Still really noisy. That's why we're restoring it. But as you can see, the speed is correct. The biggest thing with restoring a record is we're trying to minimize the noise and the pops and clicks, hiss and all that stuff that is inherent in any analog recording medium, but especially in records. Um, these are noisy, noisy records. Ideally, we would have used uh, a three mil stylus um, and we didn't. We used a microgroove stylus, so this is not an ideal situation, but I want to show you how you can do it kind of out of the box for little to no budget. Um, and, you know, again, it's all for the fun of it. So, you know, you're not, you know, doing this work for Sony or, uh, you know, Warner Brothers Records or someplace. This is just for the fun of it and backing up your own stuff or just for the hobby of, of doing it. It's fun to do. So anyway, we recorded our song here. One of the first things we're going to want to do is we are going to want to uh, eliminate the background noise. So as you can see right here, the waveform kind of gets bigger. That's where the music probably starts. Let's see. Yeah, so that's the real beginning of it. Before that, we've got just sort of this hiss, uh, which I've got the volume turned up. You should be able to hear that. Um, and what we want to do is eliminate that. Now, the program needs to know what the hiss sounds like so it knows what to subtract out of the rest of the mix. So the first thing you're going to do is highlight 
just some of the noise before the song starts just the noise part so click and drag to select that go up to effect go down to uh, noise reduction and it's going to say step one get noise profile we already selected that so hit get noise profile okay now it received the noise profile now we're going to control a which selects everything you can click and drag it or control a does that and we are going back into noise reduction and now that we have the noise profile we're going to hit OK. Now you can adjust these variables here if you want to. The decibel level is set to 9 dB as default, sensitivity 9.5, and the uh, smoothing is set to 1. So this is sort of a light uh, application of this effect, which is a noise reduction. If you take out too much, then you start taking out the music as well. So it's kind of a fine line. Uh, so hit OK. And that then applies that effect to the entire selected area, which in this case is the whole track. Okay. So now you'll see it kind of shrunk a little bit because we deleted out the, uh, you know, to the sensitivity levels that we set, we deleted out a lot of that noise. So it's going to sound a little cleaner. Okay. It's not perfect, but it's definitely better. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to delete... Um, the un this the the, the uh, stylus drop here, so that's unwanted sound, and then that silence we don't need it. So we can truncate that off. We're just going to hit this uh, after we selected the part we don't want. We're going to hit the scissors up here, and that'll delete that. And what I like to do is select near the beginning, like that. Go up to effect, and just do a fade in, which automatically just brings that up from silence. Up here, your uh, transport controls are very similar to what you're used to. Back, forward, stop, play, pause. So this will move the cursor to the beginning by hitting back there. So once you've got it uh, trimmed up the way you like it, then you can just hit play. Oops, let's rewind it to the beginning. Hit play, and you're ready to go. Now there's still some surface noise there, um, although it's uh, dramatically improved. You'll see the biggest difference on... Um, LPs I've noticed on this when you do basic noise reduction you could spend hours working on one song and I know many people that are the real pros at this uh, do and uh, there's so many different effects you can apply so many different settings um, if you google search audacity uh, record uh, restoration I believe it is you'll see a whole tutorial with all the settings you need if you've got a 78, what kind of effects you should apply, different biases that can be placed, yada, yada, yada. This was just to kind of show you how to do it, get you started, do a basic noise reduction. Um, but yeah, super fun and really cool. You can change the uh, speed of the record that you have recorded um, at a different speed because you're using a USB turntable that doesn't have 78s. Uh, so I know a lot of folks that... Uh, that use this tool uh, much better than I ever will, but uh, it's cool to see what you can do. Play around in it. Free software. You're not out anything for trying it. Uh, the record players, again, 25, 35, 45 bucks will get you a decent uh, USB turntable. Okay, so once you're done editing it and applying all the different effects and whatever you want to do, then you go up here to File and you go down here to Export Audio. You don't want to hit Save Project as well, you do if you want to save the project. That'll save your settings and the workspace and everything. But if you want to output the song that you've made, hit Export Audio. And it's going to pop up a new window here. And you're just going to uh, name the file and hit Save. And then it'll be an MP3 file. You may or may not have to uh, uh, download the MP3 codec for this. I vaguely remember having to do that. Um, it may default to a different audio file, but these days pretty much any phone or media player will recognize any type of audio file. So you can do like um, you can do like an Og Vorbis. You can do a um, let's see what else they got in here. WMA. It's a good, very good, efficient compression algorithm. You can do a WAV file. Um, so there's different choices in there. MP3 is pretty universal. Older codec, but um, universally recognized. And that's about it. And you've taken an old dirty record, you've digitized it, you've edited it, and then you've exported it. And from there, you can load the file onto your phone, you can share it with your friends, put it on a website, email it, keep it on your computer, whatever you want to do. 
And that, my friends, is how you restore a record. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Share with your friends. Um, and as always, happy record hunting and have a great rest of the day.